Hello and welcome to this special edition of Investors Hangout. This interaction to help you learn and understand savings and investments is brought to you by Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund and Value Research. With me today is Dhirendra Kumar, CEO of Value Research. Welcome Dhirendra. Thank you. On a day when the entire world is celebrating women and their achievements, we are here to discuss how smart are really women with money, uh, with their investments. Now, Dhirendra, in today's day and age, what we see is that women are donning multiple hats and, you know, doing a wonderful job at it. But when it comes to money, when it comes to investment, they, a lot of them depend, still depend on male members of the family. Why do you think that is happening? Oh, it's simply because of the legacy. Males have dominantly taken all the key decisions in the, in the family anyway, so that's what they're doing. But I think, you know, uh, things are changing a bit uh, because... Uh, Sometimes they are better, uh, b- better educated, they are better informed, maybe they have more time sometimes. And, and I think, you know, there are many other variables which make them, uh, it's, it's, it could be purely because of aversion. Many people, it's just not women only. Uh, it is also because there are many people who are otherwise very well educated. They understand things. They also are great learners. But when it comes to money issue, you know, they think that it is smart to be saying that I don't know about it. Uh, maybe it is considered to be something, uh, your naivety is considered to be something which is, uh, they, they are proud of. Uh, that's a bad thing. You know, this is one area you can do without learning a lot about, you know, history, geography, many other things where we spend our time, uh, even the amount of time we spend on politics. But nobody can do without learning about the money, money issues. What do you do? More so now, where increasingly people will be working or they will have a career uh, where you know they will have to they will have a long phase of uh, their life where their investment has to work for them that has to produce the income to support them so uh, that's just not about women only but yes history it's primarily the legacy issue you think there are any odds stacked against women uh, no on the contrary i think there are even with them you know there there's a lot of tailwind with them simply because you know uh, they are better equipped. First, uh, lady of the home understands inflation better. Uh, th- then comes to, you know, working on the budget, working on a tight budget and uh, allocating your uh, resources. Also, I think historically, you know, uh, the asset allocation and asset allocation in a manner so that, you know, there is some, some allocation for asset accumulation. Oh. I think uh, in old times, you know, if you look at our grandmothers and all, um, you, you know, two, three generations, they were the ones who will actually take care of, you know, particularly in city, because every family actually moved to a city and uh, they were migrant and uh, getting a home uh, was entirely, you know, sometime it was, we, we came across this situation also around demonetization, where the lady of the home, uh, they, they had all the reserve money, they had all the emergency money and suddenly it had to be exchanged. So it all became public knowledge otherwise, uh, and, and that in some cases it was quite a bit. So we understand that they are better savers, they understand inflation better, they can do budgeting more uh, well, and they can allocate things more intelligently for asset accumulation, spending, and what is the rightful thing. Now it comes to, you know, how it is to be invested. Uh, I think that has become extremely sophisticated of late, so they have to learn, but I think, you know, given these variables, uh, they will be, you know, it's just a matter of providing some input and they will pick up much better and faster. Okay, and there's no gender uh, specific. Absolutely, it's a completely gender neutral thing because uh, I come across as many people, uh, you know, irrespective of men or women uh, who are not smart with their money and otherwise very, you know, all all other dimensions of life, they're very smart. Uh, But uh, uh, that will, I think it's a completely gender neutral uh, situation here. Okay, so how do you think uh, should a working woman start investing? What are those suggestions that you would give them to? Uh, the fact that you know a working woman is still a minority, and they have taken a step ahead in terms of, uh, of being a working woman, and you know uh, balancing all the demand for her time, for her attention. Uh, I would say that you know just learn a little bit. One first get rid of all this notion that it is something complicated, something difficult. The other is, you know, uh, I would say that being a good investor, being good with your savings, you just need to understand three, four things. And you have to really take note of eight, ten things which you should not do, which are quite commonsensical. It has nothing to do with your brilliance, education, other things. And uh, if you take care of this, uh, that that is all that you need. 
after that it is on the go like you you are on a conveyor belt and then you learn on the course uh, so i would say that make a list of 10 things that you won't do and uh, five things which you should always do and that's about it and what are the basic rules what would you suggest oh the same things you know yeah a part of your money should be in uh, you know your emergency fund should be handy and they understand it very well uh, in you know having your health insurance having your life insurance if your family is going to be dependent on that and then dividing the money in two parts short term money long term money and never invest your long term uh, invest your long term money in equity there are different ways of investing in equity average your investment don't invest at one go be regular with it and uh, th- then you know short term money should never be invested in equity now i'll come to you know 10 15 10, 12 15 things which nobody should do and i think for that you keep watching uh, you know investors hang out because we keep telling about all the things you know don't speculate uh, don't have this notion that somebody knows the secret and he will make more money if we are not in a competition you just have to be well off you just have to be structured you just have to be you know uh, methodical in your approach and i think you know ladies can be more methodical uh then comes you know but first and foremost what not to do if something is going to be too good to be true uh i think you know this is one aspect on which you know i think uh, m- men are more vulnerable they are more vulnerable or you know they are likely to fall for something which is get rich quick uh, uh, uh you know some trick uh, which which might be on your way and that is normally you know uh, will disappoint you so something which is too good to be true is unlikely to be true and having a great belief in this that this this rule will never be broken possible that some people become rich they are early in the phase they are, they are actually not the last person in the musical chair game but uh, somebody is going to lose money and it could well be you it's a it's a random game so if you have these four five six rules that's about it and then you know uh, keep building on this there is no learning which is possible unless you do things yourself uh because if, whatever i may tell you if you really don't go ahead and choose the term insurance and do a comparison yourself why you are choosing one which rider to have uh health insurance which one uh, making your claim or doing your sip and doing three four things that's about it and if you if you if you can actually ignore and ignore all the noise all the temptation to work on anything else uh that's all there to it that's about the working women what about the housewife they might think that they are not earning so you know how can they contribute to investing one is that you know they should actually uh make a case for themselves so that they become a part owner of the wealth one is there is a logical case for it assuming that the man in the family is earning and he'll be liable for paying taxes beyond a certain threshold for example you know your investment in equity and up to 1 lakh rupee per annum capital gains uh, you know gains is exempt per individual so tell your career tell your uh, husband that you know you need some money needs to be invested in your name if if you are going to take that tax credit it's simply smart you know splitting that money in two two accounts likewise you know even in debt fund the indexation on a per uh, you know on a per individual basis likewise you know uh so splitting that accumulating that money and taking the advantage of that capital gains uh is uh, uh, is important and of course all the other things in terms of allocating money uh, your savings attitude and the bigger role which they can play is uh, you know a housewife who is uh, learning about these things and they if they are able to appreciate indexation if they are able, you know inflation uh, the power of compounding so the biggest contribution they can make is you know not demanding too many things early and uh, that and the benefits of that uh, because uh, investment is just postponed consumption and if you postpone your consumption for a while and the magic of compounding kicks in then you know you are likely to have greater resources at a, at a, at a later date and appreciating that itself can bring in far greater degree of you know well being for the family financially time now to move on to the viewers questions the first one comes in from megha agarwal who wants to know what are sovereign gold bonds and if it's worth investing in them i did not i am not a great uh, you know believer in gold as an investment avenue because and for understandable reason that you know all broader asset class equity debt and fixed income uh, and real estate 
there is some basis to it when you invest in equity you are you are getting ownership when you are uh, investing in debt you are lending your money and somebody else is putting that money to work and that is why he is giving he is, you are getting the return real estate either you are consuming it you are you know living in that house or you are renting that house and things can change depending on the outlook depending on the location and 50 other things but these are assets which has some basis in reality uh, gold as an asset it just sits in your locker and uh, you know the appreciation is entirely built you know dependent on more people like you know demanding or ask, you know needing gold or aspiring to have gold in future uh but assuming that for historical reason this is the only asset class you know which has emerged of late in a financial form which has the longest history uh our financial markets are not that old uh real estate has been and gold so i would say that uh, if at all you are somehow for some reason committed to having gold then the sovereign gold bonds are the finest way of having it because uh, these are issued by government of india and if we believe that the government of india will honor all its commitment then these bond these bonds will be honored the price appreciation or depreciation is linked to the gold prices and uh, you get little more return than gold because you you get 3 and i think nowadays you get 2 and a half percent more than gold prices annually that that's one if you hold it for the entire term which is the 8 year term then the all the gains is also tax free so the tax treatment and extra return than gold and all other forms of own, uh, gold ownership it costs money when you own jewelry uh, it will be you know there will be substantial making charges 100 rupee will not be worth 100 rupee and it will be just you know 84 rupee or 85 rupee something and then ability to realize it the degree of purity so you will be unsure of that likewise you know when it comes to coins and other things i really wonder you know what happens you know you know the liquidity bit of it your ability to realize it when you need the money in this case you know uh, it's different of course you are compromising on the liquidity but there is an interim liquidity available you can sell these bonds in the market okay now the second query has been sent in by jyoti and she asks is this the right time to take allocation in international funds and gold i don't know about gold uh if at all you should have gold then you know i would say have it like a emergency allocation but uh, international funds yes because uh, uh we have our jobs you know the very reason why we invest in mutual fund the very reason why you should diversify your your investment is the reason why you should invest in international fund our jobs are here our assets are here and all our investments are here so you do risk yourself there is another reason why we should be in- investing in some international fund their investment case is compelling uh our indian companies some of them were are very attractive and but you know some international companies or portfolios they are offering you an investment avenue which is otherwise not available to indians in such a simple format you know if you have that nasdaq 100 top 5 companies are the top 5 you know technology companies in the world the kind of growth rate that we witness there as and the valuation as compared to indian companies is much lower you know when you look at a infosys versus microsoft as an investment avenue uh, you know it's it's not a comparable avenue because it's a service company and that's a completely different kind of company uh, with greater promise uh, but on the valuation front it might look very attractive so i would say yes definitely international fund should be essential you know we should be a essential part of any diversified portfolio okay then now sumedha asked out of nps and ppf which is a better option to invest for retirement for retirement depends on what is your time frame you know uh, if you are investing for 15 years and more uh, nps with a large equity allocation because uh, ppf gets you guaranteed return but a relatively lower return uh, my sense is that it will be much lower than what you you earn from equity today it has become possible in your nps account to have 75% allocation to equity then the lower low cost of nps makes it very attractive then on top of it you get the similar tax break when you invest in ppf you get the atc benefit when you invest in nps you get little more than atc benefit because there is you can you, you can invest for 1 and 1/2 lakh rupees plus additional 50000 rupees so little extra tax break the potentially you know superior return and uh, uh, the the lowest cost so nps for for any period of 10 years and more or 15 years and more uh, nps should be the choice Shruti's mother has recently retired from a government job and she's received about 40 lakh rupees where should she invest it uh it entirely depends on her context in terms of whether whether, whether she'll be getting some pension uh, retired from a government job so i'm assuming that she'll be getting pension 
Um, then it depends on, you know, what is the additional income she aspires to have or she, she might be needing from the 40 lakh rupee accumulation that she has on her retirement. If her requirement for income is not there, her pension will be more than enough for her income requirement. Uh, then this should be, you know, conservatively invested in a, in a something like, you know, 40-50% into equity, 40-50% into fixed income, simply because then it will grow and you don't need to, uh, th might as well, this money should grow conservatively and well. Uh, if there is a need for income, then it requires a different approach. A part of that money should get into some guaranteed return uh, vehicle which will provide you a steady income without any, you know, any uncertainty. So, it uh, depends. Okay. Now, Anjali wants to know if you would suggest investing in Sukanya Samriddhi Yojana for her four-year-old daughter. Uh, no. And it might sound uh, counterintuitive because, uh, you know, Sukanya Samriddhi Yojana is nothing but a public provident fund for the girl child. And, uh, if, and issued by, you know, the government. So, there is no, no uh, issue about the safety of it. Also, the return of it and also the taxability of it. But the real thing is that, you know, when you are investing for 15 years term, uh, for a four-year-old child and the money wide might be needed for after 14, 15, 16 years for her education or for wedding or whatever, then uh, my sense is that any allocation to equity, even not even 100%, I'm not saying 100%, but, uh, you know, 60%, 50%, 35%, depending on your comfort, will is likely to generate far superior return than the Sukanya Samriddhi Yojana because Sukanya Samriddhi Yojana will definitely give you the, the return but uh, you know the predictable return or like PPF but it will not have the upside and given the time frame that you have uh, it should be invested in a manner that can maximize return not just you know keep it safe. The next question has been sent in by Prerna and she says she read somewhere that debt funds are a better alternative to fixed deposits so she wants to know aren't debt funds risky? Which out of the two debt funds and fixed deposits should be preferred? Uh, yes, debt funds are relatively risky as compared to fixed deposits because they can go up and down in value. They don't give you a pro they don't promise you a return like, unlike a uh, you know like a fixed deposit. Mm -hmm. When you make a deposit, you are told that okay, this is a one year term, you'll get this much, and uh, uh, depending on the bank, you are un unlikely to be unsure of that. Uh, but there are advantages of investing in a debt fund, which is when you invest in a debt fund, the tax treatment is different. Some, most of the time, the return from debt funds could be a little higher than the deposit. And if you hold your debt fund for three years and more, the tax could be far, you know, it, 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 tax it could be far more efficient, simply because it will be treated as a capital gains. And the capital gains tax on that fixed income investment, uh, con your ability to convert an interest income into a capital gain gets you a huge advantage because in a deposit, even if you're not deriving the interest, you are liable to pay taxes on your interest income every year. Uh, one, you are not likely, you, you are not supposed to pay taxes till you realize the investment, till you realize any part of the gain. After the realizing the gain, if it is three years and more, it will be considered capital, long-term capital gains. So that's quite, quite adv advantageous. Plus, you have risk of varying kind depending on the kind of fund that you choose. If you choose an overnight fund or a liquid fund or an ultra short-term bond fund, I don't think they are very risky. In fact, overnight fund, I would say that they are not, uh, yeah, they are safer than bank deposit, simply because they are investing in banks hmm. and they are investing in banks of multiple, uh, you know, many banks. So there are banks which can fail, but overnight fund, it, it, you know, it's unlikely that they, they, those banks will fail at the same time. So overnight funds could be safer than deposit. Sometimes the, I think my understanding is that liquid funds, given the design now, uh, they are reasonably safe. And uh, beyond that, th there are funds which are risky. You know, income funds could be risky. Sometimes the guild funds could be risky. Guild funds invest only in government securities. But if interest rate goes up, they will, they, they, they will actually uh, take a big hit in terms of value. So it depends. Two, three kind of funds, de debt funds, they are relatively safe. And you can well consider that. But uh, other funds, if you are investing just by looking at the past performance and getting attracted to them, keep away from that. Debt funds can be risky. We have recently witnessed a decline in value of many of the debt funds. So you're right, they are, they are risky. And if you do it without just looking at their return, uh, it could be even more risky. Now, Shilpa asks, considering the current market scenario, which fund among large cap and large and mid cap should, be, should one choose? 
I don't know. Uh, it it amounts to guessing which segment will do well, mm-hmm. and which segment will do well over a long period of time. And because I keep suggesting or keep insisting that when you are investing in equity, you should be investing in f- for five years and more. Then during the five years and more, there will be a market cycle in which large cap will do well, mid cap will do well, and even small cap will do well. And uh, with that in mind, invest in a you know flexi cap fund, invest in a multi cap fund. The reason is that uh, the fund manager will have greater freedom to invest in any part of the market. And uh, during this period, there will be segments of the market which will do well and do poorly, and you'll be able to you you know uh, you'll be able to override that better. Okay. Now today's last query has been sent in by Shashi, and she says that the lock-in period of her old ELSS investment has completed, and they're about two lakh rupees. She also has a personal loan of around one point five lakh rupees. So, would you suggest redeeming her ELSS investments to prepay the loan, or should she continue with the EMIs? I would say, you know, personal loan. Just check what is the rate of interest that you're paying. If it's high, you know, many a times if it's from your employer and it is some kind of concessional five six percent or maybe interest free or some such thing, uh, then carry on with your loan. Uh, if it is a high return, you know, if you if the interest pay, payable on your personal loan is very high, then prepay it. Well, that's it for today. Thank you, Dhirendra. Thank you. Thank you to all our viewers. Do keep sending us those questions and keep watching the space for more information. Bye for now.